So even the surgeons generally have the attitude that TMJ surgery should be a last resort, only if nothing else works. Okay. Most people do fairly well with non-surgical treatment, and since it is a joint misalignment problem by and large, something has to be done to put the joint back into alignment again. And a very simple way to do that is with an oral appliance. One of the most common appliances that we use is this sort of thing. It looks a lot like an orthodontic retainer. The difference is that it has a biting surface. It fits over only the lower teeth, mm -hmm. generally not the uppers, although in some cases we have to make an upper appliance instead of a lower. The lower front teeth protrude through it, so it's not visible. If anyone sees the appliance at all, they see the wire and they think that people are wearing a retainer mm -hmm. uh, to have their teeth straightened. The functional part of the appliance is the biting surface. This biting surface first has some thickness. If we can keep some thickness between the teeth, then we can maintain some space in the joint and take the pressure off the tender tissue that's at the back of the joint. Second, the biting surface is designed according to our examination findings and x-rays, so generally it moves the jaw a tiny bit forward. And if people close into a slightly forward position, Again, that takes the pressure off that tender tissue in the back of the joint. The third thing it does is guide the tongue. We build in little contours that show here as the little red bulges. Those are designed based on the x-rays and examination too to guide the tongue up and forward into the proper position. The tongue is a very powerful muscle. It can put 30 or 40 pounds of force on the teeth. And there's an old rule in dentistry that Whenever you fight the tongue, the tongue wins. Mm -hmm. So we want to recruit it and help it also position the jaw in the right place so the joint can heal. People typically wear this kind of thing full time, both day and night, mm -hmm. often for a matter of months. And when the joints stabilize and the person can take out the appliance for a period of time without the clicking or pain returning, they taper down until they wear it only at night then they may wear it at night for a very long time just to help make sure the problem does not come back. Right, well that's great. Because I know if anyone is in pain from your jaw, we use our, our mouth muscles constantly uh, for talking, for eating, you know, our whole life. Yes, and in fact. to uh, have to do that in pain. Well, the simple act of swallowing, whether or not you're eating something, occurs somewhere between 800 and 2,000 times a day. Each time you swallow, you put somewhere between 50 and 110 pounds of force on each one of the TMJs. The jaw is very powerful. So the joint is designed to be very strong. It mm -hmm. can stand up to a lot for many years, but if something's misaligned, eventually something gives away. Right, that's good to know. Well, I'm afraid we're running out of time. This has been such great information, especially if you have a loved one out there that you know has this issue. So is there any um, last words of advice for some of the viewers or any re recap on anything real quick? Well, the most common thing or most obvious thing, of course, is to uh, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't chew gum to excess. Don't chew sunflower seeds or any other hard structures excessively. Avoid oral habits, such as resting your chin on your hand. Watch your posture. Proper head and neck posture encourages proper jaw alignment, too. So essentially anything that benefits whole body health, posture, uh, caring for yourself will also care for the TMJ. And if you have symptoms of a TMJ disorder, do something about it early. It's far easier to treat an early disorder than a latent degenerated one. Okay, that sounds great. And uh, I wanna thank you because I guess we've run out of time, Dr. Hakula. And is there any uh, stories that of anyone that you help specifically on uh, with the TMJ that you can think of? Oh, there, there are many. We see uh, several new patients every day, and mm -hmm. the stories they bring in are pretty remarkable. There are people who've had migraine headaches for years and years, have been taking heavy doses of medication to the extent that they're actually disabled. They can't work. They're too groggy to function well, and once they get rid of their pain, they become productive again. It's really all about quality of life. Yes, very much so, and to enhance it with... Uh, Minnesota Cranial, so that would be great. Well, thank you. Okay. Alrighty, well, I look forward to having you view other shows of Knowledge for Wellness and visit my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com and let me know where you viewed my show.
and the mission of Knowledge for Wellness is to inform viewers on health issues, to expose, educate, and make viewers aware to enhance themselves and their loved ones for a better quality of life. And I hope we have provided this for you and your loved ones. So until next time, be well and goodbye. Thanks again. Over time you've healed so much in me And I am living proof That although my darkest hour had come Your light could still shine through And at times it's just enough to cast The shadow on the wall Though I am grateful that you shine your light on me at all Who am I that you would love me so gently? Who am I that you would recognize my name? Lord, who am I that you would speak to me so softly?